us and after they developed it and found out that they're very sized needles and all the needles didn't fit in there. So they went to my 3D printing and my prototyping center and my engineering interns designed a attachment that you can put in there to take on other needles. And so now they're just getting ready to, to get this these products out into the marketplace. <clears throat> Dr. Meredith Warner, she's an orthopedic surgeon and uh, she's developed this flip-flop for uh, for plantar fasciitis. We, we made it in our prototyping center and then now she's having it made and she's distributing it uh, through orthopedic offices. Uh, SBIR grants. This is that federal grant program I'm telling you about and, um, and one of our companies, SRAM Technologies, uh, has 1.2 million from the Air Force and their uh, technology, they, they're able to take uh, carbon dioxide out of the air and compress it in a way that it creates a refrigerant like Freon, so it's replacing Freon. So the military is really, really into this. Aquaculture systems, the filtration center uh, from USDA for shrimp in aquaculture. Uh, Carver has developed this cooling suit. In fact, Senator DeCassidy loved that when he came. It's a military, the military uh, fighter has a vest on that could weigh as much as 90 pounds with all the electronics and everything, and you're fighting in a, a hot climate, Afghanistan, Iraq, and it's very, very taxing on the body of the fighter. Well, they've developed a t-shirt type material with a battery pack, and it's, uh, it's it replaced a lithium battery, and it literally is a cooling mechanism. And so the, um, the De Department of Defense is now uh, buying this uh, product from them, so we're now building them an extra space to do manufacturing. Uh, and uh, because their research facility doesn't have space for it. And, um, and now we've got the police, the Sheriff's Department and the Baton Rouge Police trying it, and they are loving it because in, you know, in that climate we're, that we're all in, this is really keeping the, the, the person uh, in better shape and cooler and, and more alert. Uh, then we went to Exxon and at the Exxon refinery. They're testing it at Exxon right now for the people in the plants. And then we're getting ready to go to the Department of Transportation and get Sean Wilson to put it on some people out in the uh, road construction. So this thing has a gigantic potential. It's all patented and their technology is really uh, pretty amazing. Um, and so these are the kinds of things that we're doing over there. And we said, what is important to you as the stakeholders? You know, you want to see businesses started, you want to see jobs created, you want to see money brought in here uh, through contracts that get spent here, you want to know what the average salary of your people are, and uh, how many graduates are hired, how many interns you're employing, all of these kinds of things we track. This is what, this is what we give to the President of the University, the Secretary of Economic Development, all of our, what we call our stakeholders. And, um, you know, we have five companies um, right now uh, that are licensing LSU research and actually paying LSU a royalty. Um, you know, we've got, um, I think an average salary, I can't, print's too small, but I think $46,000 is the average salary of the employees there. Our payroll is, you know, $30 million a year. So these are the kinds of things that we capture. And then with our big anniversary deal on November 27th, We've gone back and, and contacted all of the companies that started back in 1988 through today on and getting them involved in getting their data to show what we've done. And we've documented over 10,000 jobs since 1988. <clears throat> so the, uh, these are the, the things that you're going to be looking for, um, the multipliers when you uh, start bringing in the tax base. Uh, as these companies graduate out and they build their own buildings, all of this stuff enhances the community here. And then, of course, the, the students enhances, uh, you know, their, their ability to keep and stay in the community. And uh, so just in ending realistic expectations, if this is a long-term deal. You can't just put a sign out on a piece of property and say, I've got a research park. It takes a lot of community effort. It takes a lot of teamwork. It takes you know, the university, the community, everybody coming in and working to make this thing work. And, you know, our our 200-acre uh, park at, at LSU, um, you know, we're looking at a 30-year build-out before we actually have most of the land uh, utilized. And that's just the way it is because we're highly selective on who can go there. And, um, 
And so all of uh, all of you in the room today, you know, you, you if you're interested in this and want to see it happen, you've got to talk and gather and, and really kind of build this up and, and, and expand this group to the to more and more peoples because it needs to be a total community buy-in. And that's just a little bit about my background, which we talked about. But I've done this at the Magnese, the Seed Center. I think some of y'all have been over there to see that. Uh, I did their study. Um, New York Medical College is a, a, a medical school that um, received some funding to do an incubator, and it's doing very well right now. And uh, so these are just kind of some of the things that we have. And next. Uh, that's it. Any questions? Um, I'll be glad to answer them. And. Uh, and again, I'm sincere about the, uh, any time you're in Baton Rouge, come look at what we're doing. I, I think you would really uh, enjoy the tour. And then um, yeah, I'm going to get uh, Dr. Armstrong to uh, send you out the invitation. If you're all there on the 27th, uh, that'll be fun. Uh, questions? Yeah, yes, sir. What, what, what is the, give me a little bit of the story behind what you, role you would play <coughs> Would roll out. Yeah. Okay. Oh well, Magnese. Uh, you know, I met with uh, uh, Mayor Randy Roach, who was the mayor back then, and um, and met with the uh, people at Magnese University, and they 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 came and saw what we were doing in LSU, and they said we want one, <clears throat> and so they hired me to just go in there and do a feasibility study and business plan, and then I handed it off to them, and they hired their people and launched it. They raised the money to build the building. They have a beautiful building there. Um, if you've not been, campus? Uh, it's right across the street. I mean, literally across the street from campus. And it's, um, you know, and so, and then the big thing too is that um, you want to make sure that um, we, the location has to have access to the community. Like LSU is a walking campus. Uh, I started on campus right by Tiger Stadium. And then in 2005, when we acquired this land, we moved out there. To the research park that was the best thing that ever happened because you know it, it was hard for visitors to come in it was hard for people to get to me and so now we have free parking and very expansive space so that's that and magnese is like and that how many uh well my first in 88 we magnese. oh and magnese oh they're they're small yeah, it's, uh, they're small. it may be 10 10 acres max yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, but yeah. it's not the same concept I mean, I mean, it is because they would do the same due diligence mm -hmm. yeah. and work that you, right. you've done right. with LSU, but they would have to put it in a different place. Yeah, and in, in other words, what she's saying is that they have an incubator, basically. The Seed Center is an incubator. They've got a student incubator component to it, and then they, they have their SBDC works out of there, mm -hmm. and, and that's, you know, super important. But then, like, what we have is with, since we got the Albemarle 200 acres, mm -hmm. Now, when Carver Scientific needs a new building, they just build a new building right next door, and so in that way, they don't lose that touch with the university. And in fact, um, Dr. Ron Malone with Aquaculture Systems, his company with the, those filtration systems is doing very well, and he needs more space. And he's, you know, he's now we're working with him on building a building for him, and we're getting a private developer. LSU is not going to build any more buildings out there. We, we, any money we get for infrastructure at LSU is going to go on campus, meaning repairing roofs and classrooms. And, um, and so we have to go to the private developers and say, do you lease this land, do you build a building, you own the building, we're going to fill it up with these companies. But that's, that's the research park concept as opposed to the seed center just being the incubator concept. And, um, and, and even, if you, even if you start out small here with 40 or 50 acres where you could have that one seed center type facility or LBTC type facility and then have that other uh, property available for, as you graduate and grow these people out. I've done quite a bit of research uh, as well and the, if you would share the average size of, an, of a research park is not as wonderful as what you have to <laughs> Well, <achieve>. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, one of the things that we've said in, in our meetings of the Association of University Research Parks, you've seen one research park, you've seen one research park, every one of them there. And, and it's really, really unique in seeing what's happening now because of this innovation district, this work, live, and play, and, and they, the buzzwords now, collision, saying, you know, I want this chemistry professor to collide with this uh, engineering professor, and then something else is going to happen out of that. 
one of the most interesting that I just came back from Stanford University and you know Stanford and Research Triangle Park are the granddaddies I mean these are the two things everybody here when you say Research Park you think Stanford and, and RTP and what they have developed was these gigantic economic development engines which had um, you know like at Stanford you've got Ford has 40 acres and then Tesla has 25 acres and you have you know all of the Hewlett Packard 40 acres they don't talk to each other there's no collisions there's no interaction and so what they're doing and then that's what I went out there for they're taking a 20 acre track and they're putting a seat center type multi-tenant building in there and and try and then they have meeting rooms so they're trying to get the Ford guys and the Hewlett Packard guys to come to events there in our uh, research triangle park Research Triangle Park is doing the same thing. They're taking a piece of property in the center of Research Triangle because they have all these silos of these big companies who aren't talking to each other, and it's called the Frontier. And they're doing this work, live, and play. They're putting in apartments and condos and restaurants and meeting spaces and an incubator so that you can get this interaction because that's what happens, you know, and that's that's what makes these things work and that's what really makes them um, develop new technologies, new ideas. Are you from? So, so uh, proximity, typically no more than five, ten miles away from the university? Yeah, yeah I'm going to tell you that uh, faculty um, are somewhat lazy and do not like to travel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, faculty members. <laughs> Yeah, but not 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 for a meeting. <laughs> yeah, they're talking about so yeah, the closer to the better. 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 We're four miles away, right. and and I thought that was going to be a problem, and because Pennington is about eight miles from yeah eight miles from LSU, and and they were having trouble getting people to come out there, and uh, but with us four miles away, and, and since we put the gates on the campus to where it's a walking campus, and parking is a nightmare. And so when I have, I'm, and I'll call, you know, uh, the dean of engineering. So look, I need, you know, a faculty member in this area to meet with Carver Scientific, and he'll give me a name. I'll contact him, and I said, do you want us to come out there? No, it's too much trouble to come on campus. I'll come to you because he can pull up right to the building, get in, and walk in. So we have broken down that barrier. But if you got too far away, if 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 you probably got 10 or 15 miles away, then you'd have a little problem. Dr. Armstrong, one time there was a party interested in possibly gifting some land. I didn't know if they were still interested in doing that or? The, 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 they would do that. But as I've gone around the area, I've, I've identified uh, at least 10 potential sites for this, but, but I, I'm, I'm not going to try to make a decision. I think the feasibility study and other people that do research on this will decide uh, where, where those are. But there, there are opportunities here. That there, not only is there an opportunity for people to donate land, but there is an opportunity for someone uh, uh, to, to build uh, a building, for example, a dormitory, uh, and, uh, and with, with no cost to you, and uh, at least the dormitory out. There are those opportunities, uh, and, and we can find them. We just need to mature those. Yeah. How long does it uh, I mean. You know, probably the, um, you know, you'd probably want to give probably three or four months to six months. You know, because you really want to interview and talk to a lot of people. Um, you know, you want to go out and, and, and really get, you know, you build why you, part of the feasibility study is really building uh, a coalition of supporters. And also, um, many times, like, uh, you know, the stakeholders will say, I've got these three people who are very negative and, and will fight it. And so by and during the feasibility study, you go talk to them too and find out what their concerns are and try to, to get them to, um, to understand why this probably is a good thing. And, uh, but then, you know, we want to talk to all the industries, uh, see what types of things are spinning out, really to, to talk to, uh, you know, any and everybody we could at, at ULM and Delta. To see, you know, who who are their entrepreneurial faculty members? Who are the, what are the things that are coming out of there? What are they doing that can be a, a huge part of this? You know, the pharmacy side of it. You know, just uh, you know, is this something that would would have potential here? You know, and what would it take? You know, what kind of equipment? Who you know, who what kind of companies would you recruit to come in and have access to all of that? 
about 25 years ago, I was in the Durham area and saw the uh, economic engine that the Research Triangle Park was. Mm -hmm. And but they didn't they didn't just focus on one university. It was three universities oh, yes. uh, uh, yeah. there. Yeah. Um, and then you mentioned it kind of in passing that, that Louisiana Tech and Grambling would be a part of it. Any any reason for them not to be uh, a part? Yeah, of Yeah, I mean that? I haven't talked to any. I mean we do a lot of work with Tech, yeah. and um, and Les Geis is a, just a sure. good friend, and um, and we we have a lot of clients through our ISBIR program up there at Tech, and they've developed their own little research park, sure. and uh, and so uh, we support them totally. But you know I don't know what um, you know as far as if, um, if there's things that. Uh, you know that could be done or, here. Maybe, or, let me ask this question because I, I'm not real clear, and maybe yeah. maybe everybody else in the room is. Where are we in the process? Is this just a concept, or have you already had conversations with the various schools and commitments? No, in this no. Group? This is. I mean, Dr. Armstrong, come come over here and tell. Okay. Tell, tell, so tell so what we're doing. Well, our first step would be to complete the feasibility study. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's what. We're, that's kind of the that focus. Helps. That helps. That helps. Let me answer yeah. part of your question too. I've talked to Grambling and to uh, uh, Rick Dallas, and yeah. he is very, very interested. But, but uh, Grambling is not a research uh, facility, okay. and, and over a period of time, uh, they'll need to, to change and adjust, and, and maybe we can help them in that direction. As far as Louisiana Tech is concerned, <coughs> they have, uh, I forget what it is, something like 300 acres uh, that they are developing. Uh, you know what it is? It's around that. But they're, they're developing a, a research uh, a park out there. Okay. But what we've said is that there are things that they have that we will need, and there are things that we'll produce that they'll need that at some period, uh, some point in time, uh, is going to uh, cause us to, uh, to to work together. Yeah. At least that's what we're, we're thinking about. Okay. But they're aware of. They're all aware of what we're doing. Right. Yeah. And any. any